Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be introducing the situation during the Thomson East Coastline disruption on the 7th of March 2023, the impacts caused by the unfortunate incident, as well as my thoughts and opinions. Without further ado, let's get started. One thing before we actually begin, please note that this video is solely for informative purposes, and in no way intended to blame Smart for causing this incident. We strongly believe that no one wants such unfortunate events to occur, and it certainly isn't easy to manage such disruptions. Please do not target or flame Smart in the comments section or after watching this video, thank you. I am now on board bus service 105 bound for Sarangoon, at around 5.20 pm. Earlier today, AS MRT sent out a post on Twitter notifying the public that Thomson East Coast Line TL, services were disrupted. But how severe was the situation? Let's find out together. Alighting from the bus, let's make our way into the train station. Looking at the information board, we can see that Platform D is not in operation despite Stevens being A through station with trains going in both directions, piquing some curiosity. Something clearly isn't right. Let's proceed to the platform and observe the situation there. Over here, Platform D is completely closed with no arriving trains, while it seems like Platform C has trains arriving regularly. It feels like only the northbound direction towards Woodlands North is affected. Many confused commuters waited for northbound trains to arrive, making the usually deserted Stevens Station feel crowded for the first time. Let's board the train bound for Gardens by the Bay. Departing Form Stevens, everything seems normal. However, due to unknown reasons, the train originated from this station which is very unusual. Shortly after that, the train makes an uneventful arrival at Napier Station. Stepping into the platform, the first thing that catches my eye is that the earlier 7-minute interval got reduced to 5 minutes. Surprisingly, there is northbound train service at this station, however there seems to be severe train bunching. Let's head over to the lower platforms and investigate the situation. Almost instantly, the train arrives as per normal carrying passengers from Orchard and beyond. However, it seems like there is more in store for us. Oh wait, there's more. As MRT staff announced that this train service will end at the current station, forcing all commuters to alight from the train and causing immense confusion among commuters, including myself. Many observed in shock as the empty train departed the station. Upon hearing that announcement, commuters moved to the upper platform in hopes of being able to ride a train. However, it was towards the direction of Gardens by the Bay and not Woodlands North, making me rather skeptical of the previous announcement. Wouldn't it be simpler to understand if they said that there is no more northbound train service? Watch to the end to find out what happened next. At around 5.45 pm, free bridging bus service was activated. Let's proceed to the bus stop at the street level and check that out. Over here, many people were waiting here for buses and the orange light was activated, signifying that bridging buses have started operations. The moment bus 105 arrived, many commuters rushed to board the bus to use alternative transport routes to their destinations. Fortunately for them, there were also free regular bus services, meaning that they had free bus rides when boarding at the affected MRT stations. 
After giving up waiting for a bus, I went back to the platform to see a train enter the upper platform in the reverse direction. Apparently, trains between Caldecott and Orchard are being operated by a shuttle service only on a single track, since only the aforementioned stations have turnbacks for trains. It seems like the fault has occurred between Caldecott and Stevens stations. The train enters Stevens Station on Platform D, which is normally utilized by southbound trains. It is indeed astonishing to enter a station using tracks designated for the opposite direction, and see the doors open on the left when there is an island platform. Sorry Bayfront I forgot about you. Let's not digress and see the situation on the platform. Many commuters actually thought the service terminated here and headed over to Platform D to wait for the train stabled there to open its doors. The screen still showed the shuttle service between Orchard and Caldecott, making it difficult for commuters to make a decision since there was varying information coming from different sources. In the end, the train continued to Caldecott on the single track. This train service ends here. Thank you for traveling with SMRT. This announcement brings back memories before the third stage of the line opened, where all services terminated here. During that time though, trains entered this platform on the other direction, resulting in trains never opening their doors on the left side. Let's now board a free bridging bus from Caldecott. Surprisingly, as MRT was also involved in the bridging bus operations, breaking away from the past when Tower Transit usually was the sole operator assisting. Let's depart from Caldecott Station and I'll share my thoughts and opinions about how SMRT did. Firstly, I have to commend them for their quick response to the problem, with quick activation of alternative transport modes and the free shuttle from Caldecott to Orchard. Honestly, even though it was not very effective due to low frequency, is definitely better than nothing and please acknowledge the fact that the low frequency couldn't be avoided due to infrastructural limitations. On a similar note, even though bridging buses nearly five times longer than the existing rail service due to traffic conditions during the peak hour, some form of service is still better than none. In addition, the station staff were friendly in advising commuters in alternative travel modes and remained calm and collected despite the chaotic situation. However, I did feel that communications could be better both among staff and commuters. A station staff at Napier Station told commuters that there was free bridging bus service despite the Twitter page having no relevant message, however in the end free bridging buses were actually deployed. The Twitter page could have been updated slightly more frequently to give commuters a heads up of the most recent situation in order to better play their journey. In addition, this message was incomprehensible. In conclusion, I feel that overall the situation was rather well managed. Ultimately though, I sincerely hope that such disruptions would not happen as it causes severe inconvenience to both rail companies, and most importantly, the thousands or even millions of commuters affected by a stalled train, a faulty point, or a power cut resulting in no power being delivered to the third rail. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you have learned something new. If you have enjoyed watching this, please leave a like, and subscribe to my channel. Goodbye and see you soon. Doors are closing. <laughs>